Hey Pure VC, it's Andy, uh, Cloudy and Milder. This is my July 2020 vinyl collection update, kind of what's been in, a little bit of everything. Um, across the board really on styles today, got quite a bit to show so I'm going to dive uh, straight in. Oh first off though, I'd like to thank uh, Mark G with a C, bit of a bit of a surprise but he sent me this uh, Probot uh, CD. Uh, it's an album I know pretty well. Uh, I've only ever had a digital copy of this before, but um, he picked it out. I think he showed it in a recent video, and I, I mentioned I'm still to pick it up. And uh, complete surprise, he he sent it to me. In fact, the only reason I knew it was him that sent it to me is I had to when I peeled off the address label, he'd stuck on the envelope. I can see his address underneath. So thanks very much for that, Mark. Really uh, appreciate that. Uh, great album, especially the um, the song uh, "Shake Your Blood" with Lemmy. That is absolutely. Uh, killer, one of my favourite uh, heavy metal songs of all time. And this video is also going to feature another one of my favourite heavy metal songs of all time, so stay tuned. Um, so, first up, Overkill, Kill Box 13. I've had this in the inbox for quite some time now. I think I picked it up maybe even middle of last year, but never really got around to spinning it. Or in fact, I did spin it one or two times, but it didn't click straight away. So this is Overkill Killbox 13, originally came out in 2003. This is the uh, 2015 Back on Black uh, reissue. It's a 2 LP, 45 RPM, not a big fan of 45 RPM albums. Here's your artwork. Uh, very year 2000s metal look there, isn't it? It's, it's very understated. It's almost apologetic heavy metal look just black and even black iron shirts as well though this um, t-shirt picked up off the floor uh, nonsense that we had back in the 80s very well kept overkill this is overkill light up of uh, Dee Dee Verney uh, Bobby Blitz Tim Muller Dave Linsk, Linsk sorry and uh, Derek uh, Taylor um, it's quite an understated release there's a little bit of a write-up here and um, there's no the inner sleeves are just plain paper so I've replaced them um, on the uh, this uh, silver vinyl um, labels are the same all, so I'm not going to show both. Um, on the back, it just says "Overkill deliver a toxic dose of raw thrash metal" on this critically acclaimed album, Killbox 13, recorded in 2002. Overkill returned to their original rough and ready style for this 10-track release, unleashing their trademark solid a uh, trademark solid rock sound, an undiluted shot of pure thrash metal. I don't think that describes this well at all. Um, it's a, it's an overkill album. It's an okay overkill album. Um, uh, by certainly nowhere near their best, and certainly nowhere near their worst. I would say it's heavy, but it's more mid-paced. Um, it's nowhere near their ferocious best and the overkill sound that, that I would uh, reach for straight away. But there are some good songs on here, but nothing's particularly stand out. Uh, Devil by the Tail, uh, Damned and um, the sounds of a dying are probably three of my favorite ones there. Many other songs here, they, I'm just, I'm reading the titles again now and I can't really remember them to be honest with you. Um, so, so not that memorable, but certainly not a clunker. And the whole two albums at 45 RPM with two to three tracks per side, it's almost too much of a chore to get up and turn over every side, but not quite. Um, it's, a, let's say, it's an okay Overkill album, certainly one worth getting for the collection. I picked that up off on eBay for uh, about £10, so it was, you know, it, was, it was a steal, really. Next up, we're going back to 1981 uh, for some uh, double trouble with uh, Gillen. Starting to um, get into Gillen a bit. I showed one in a couple of uh, episodes of this ago, and this is 1981. I think he also released Future Shock in this year. I'm not quite sure whether Double Trouble came first or Future Shock, but I picked this one to listen to next. You'll see Future Shock and my opinions come up in a, uh, in a future episode. Uh, so this is their fifth studio album, I think. Um, again, released as a, a Double Trouble, double album, one studio album, one uh, live album containing tracks from Reading Festival and from uh, Rainbow 81. Um, Gillen's band at this time was uh, is the guys here. We've got uh, Colin Towns on keyboards, John McCoy on bass, Mick Underwood on drums, Yannick Gers, uh, 
Coat of Maiden on uh, guitars, and of course, uh, Gillen on vocals. Um, gatefold with some live shots and uh, lyrics as well. Um, usual apologies for the glare and all that going on here. Um, I'll rip your spine out. Men of War Nightmare, standout tracks for me on here. Um, I think Gillen seems to give off a real swagger uh, with his, his vocal style. He's totally in command of his vocal performance. Uh, and I could totally see why uh, Bruce Dickinson, he, he, this guy was a big uh, influence on Bruce Dickinson in his early years. Um, as I say, yeah, great album. Uh, there's your label. Uh, well worth checking out. I'm looking forward to giving uh, Future Shock a, a spin um, in the next, maybe in the next episode. Who knows? We'll see what uh, see what takes my fancy. Um, next up, we've got uh, Fastway and uh, Waiting for the Raw. This is from 1986. This is a Canadian press, and I got this as VCLT from uh, Greg the Egg uh, not too long ago. Um, Fastway, Fast Eddie Clark's uh, band, basically, uh, essentially a British band, although Dave King on vocals would probably disagree with that because he's actually Irish. But the British band, British-ish band, <laughs> they may be, but they've got a totally American uh, sort of commercial metal uh, sound. Um, fair amounts of keyboards, sort of tinny drum sound as well. Uh, it's one of those albums that I enjoy well, listen to it but it kind of fades away a bit uh, from memory again looking at the tracks here the only ones that really jump out are the world waits for you the opening track uh, little by uh, little as well and uh, and rock on are the probably the choice cuts for me from this album this is the album that they released before um, Trick or Treat, which is the, obviously the soundtrack for the album of the same name. And I used to think, because I was mad on Trick or Treat, the movie, and I actually thought that the uh, Sammy Kerr was actually played by Dave King. Um, but uh, obviously, if you, see, if you see the movie in life, it was not the case at all. Uh, but a very good, listenable album by uh, Fastway. Uh, check out a track from this album in the playlist that accompanies this video. There'll be a link uh, above and below at the end. So every every album that I show here, I'm going to pick a, uh, a choice cut uh, for you guys and stick it in a playlist so you don't have to go searching for it. You can you can find it uh, straight away. So it's the uh, Canadian and American uh, Columbia label. Had this been a UK press, it would have been uh, more of an orangey yellow label with just CBS written across the top there so um, thanks again for that Greg it's a really add to the collection really enjoy uh, Fastway now this next album to me is one of the finest heavy metal albums of all time um, most of my all-time greats that I would uh, easily instantly pick and say they're the best are ones that uh, have been with me for 30 plus years get on for 40 years but this one, I have the uh, the VC to thank for this one. This is an album I was uh, blissfully unaware of for years. And also when it was showed by a, a few people when I joined, I, I kind of, I don't know why I steered, steered clear for it, but um, eventually I listened to it and it blew me away with how good it is. Now I've um, picked up an OG of this uh, a while ago. Um, and what I'm going to show here is the music on vinyl reissue that I, I picked up recently because I saw it for a great price and because the music on vinyl releases are fantastic and that's obviously uh, a Sanctuary, a Refuge Denied, originally from 1987. This is the 2013 repress, um, limited edition of 666 copies on red vinyl, uh, individually numbered, mine is uh, 566. Um, yeah, I had to. I mean, I'm. I get very few '80s reissues, and generally, I only get them if I've got the original album, and it's a uh, an all-time favourite. And uh, and the reissue is, you know, sounds fantastic, which is what this one does. Uh, it's the combination of sort of heavy atmospheric metal and Warren Dane's vocals. Oh, they're just amazing. I absolutely love them to bits. Uh, complete match made in heaven between his vocal style and, and the music. Um, but as I say, yeah, music on vinyl, absolutely fantastic. Um, 
Battle Angels, White Rabbit. Um, the Third World. All great tracks, but as I mentioned earlier, my probably vying with a trooper maybe for my all time heavy metal favourite track of all time has to be Die For My Sins. I I can't get enough of that song. I don't know if it's because it's still fairly new, and by fairly new I mean in the last two years or so. But um yeah, I, I, I you know it's it's one of those songs that just gets me every single time. And uh yeah, just I love it. Can't get enough of it. Uh, what amazes me most about this album is everybody knows that it was produced by Dave Mustaine, but this is 1987. This is between um, P Cells and So Far So Good So What. I mean, how messed up was uh, Dave Mustaine at that time? Uh, on the, uh, being all drugged up or what have you. But still, he produces a masterpiece like this. I mean, what a legend. Um, but Sanctuary, yes. Refuge Denied, Music on Vinyl Repress. Uh, comes with uh, inner and uh, lyrics and uh, this one is on uh, red vinyl it's not quite fully transparent I'm not a big fan of transparent vinyl I always feel it, it just feels a bit cheap but this does feel very solid and uh, I say very well put together but what prompted me to get the music on vinyl reissue even though I had the OG was I picked up um, Into the Mirror Black their second uh, studio album, 1990. Again, this is a 2013 uh, repress music on vinyl. Um, I hadn't actually heard this album before I bought this version. So this is again a limited edition 666. This is on blue vinyl this time. Uh, I have number 117. Uh, got it for a great price. Hadn't heard it. Put it on. Fully expected to be as blown away as I was with the first one, but. Um, it hasn't clicked with me in the same way. Don't get me wrong, it's an excellent, excellent album, and I've been playing it a lot to try and get that spark really to light. I will persevere, but there's, the songs just aren't as uh, as outstanding. Uh, Future, the first two really are the ones that, that immediately spring out to me, and that Future Tense and uh, Taste Revenge, absolutely uh, great songs. This is a bit of a no frills release though. There wasn't. Um, even an, an inner uh, of any kind with it. Let's say it comes on 180 gram blue vinyl. Next up, some UK thrash for you now, and a little bit of Hell Bastard Natural Order. Again, from 1990, this is an earache release, uh, Mosh. There's a camera, Mosh 22. There's your, your earache. So, uh, Hell Bastard were a UK thrash band that originally uh, started out kind of playing hardcore punk. And f when it came to this album, they were kind of experimenting, I guess, with a bit more thrash. Uh, the band supposedly hate this. They think it's the worst thing that they've ever done and they never play anything from it live, from what I've read. But I think it's absolute quality, but that I'm more of a thrash uh, fan than, than really a hardcore or a, or a punk fan. Um, killer opener, interrogate them. Uh, there's two really short acoustic numbers in here, which I don't think do anything for the album at all and you know, could quite easily have not been on there and you, and you wouldn't think, oh, this is missing a short uh, acoustic instrumental in between these tracks. Um, and justly, justly, I don't know what that means, justly executed um, is a great song, but the lyrics are missing from here. So it comes with one of these, comes with like an A4 uh, copy typed up sheet and justly executed is missing from it. So it, it got me wondering if it was a um, it was a cover version, but I can't see anything to suggest that it is. Um, Google searches all say that it's a, a hell bastard uh, song. You always get the lyrics with it online, so I guess maybe it is, but. Uh, Needless to say, great, uh, great album. If you want to check out a song, check out uh, Neon Storms. I think that's the one I've put on the playlist. But um, yeah, killer UK thrash. Even if the band don't like it, I do. I think it was a thrash to piece, as Darcy would say. There we go. Okay, next up, complete change of pace. Now, and we're going to go with some. Uh, 
uh, Uni Sonic. I've been on a, I've been on a big um, Halloween Andy Darris era kick recently. I showed in a video that I picked up the um, the Halloween uh, la, 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 United Pumpkins United United Alive box set, and again, you know, the, just the the combination of Darris's vocals and Kiske's vocals, absolutely superb. And I, and I knew I needed to check out Unisonic uh, a little bit more. Bev Clarkovision, she sent me a CD uh, some time ago, but I haven't really given that the time. Uh, I really it, it really needed to get into it. I saw a couple of good deals on. Uh, Amazon, so uh, I picked this up. So this is a project um, really with Michael Kiske and Kai Hansen in, in perfect harmony. Um, I use, I'll jump on anything that Kai Hansen has uh, has done and uh, this, this doesn't let me down. It's a great album from start to finish. It's a proper double album as well, whereas the Overkill one was like two or three songs per side. This is 33 RPM, there's what, 12 songs on here, 12 full songs plus an intro, they're all you know, four or five plus minutes long. Um, you know, you don't feel like you're constantly getting up and changing the, the sides. Um, here's your gatefold. There go. I uh, mentioned this is what, Ear Music 2014. I didn't mention that already. It's got one of these nice sort of, um, uh, it's, a bit of a matte finish cover, but the uh, the detail is uh, embossed and uh, nice and uh, glossy as well. Um, songs to check out on here: "Exceptional" and "Find Shelter." Yeah, they're absolutely quality. But this, start to finish, absolutely fantastic album. It's very similar to the the Keepers area of era, sorry, of Halloween. But perhaps probably less heavy and a little more melodic, a bit more grown up uh, as well. But again, it is like you know, 40 years uh, later. But uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, I'm not gonna both records. Just say it's on plain back vinyl. They came in just shiny uh, paper sleeves, the kind that uh, you know, stick to the record. So they've been replaced um, and uh, plain black uh, vinyl stuff. Um, also on the Unisonic kick and to close out for today, um, this is a, let's call it a 12 inch, well, it's more of an EP really, it's got six tracks. Uh, so I've been on a bit of a kick and I found these fairly cheap. So this is Unisonic for the Kingdom, also on Ear Music, also from 2014. And again, Kai Hansen and Michael Kiske in perfect harmony. Um, it has two studio tracks, so it has for the Kingdom uh, the title track here, and um, what's that one called there? You Come Undone, which is an EP exclusive song. And then the other four tracks, Unisonic, Never Too Late, Star Rider, and Souls Alive, are all recorded from the Masters of Rock Festival in Czech Republic in 20, uh, 2012. Now, the interesting thing about uh, Unisonic is... Um, as well as it having uh, Michael Kiske and Kai Hansen, formerly of Halloween, it also has a, a couple of members from a band called Pink Cream 69. And um, Pink Cream 69 is the band that Andy Darris left to join Halloween. So it seems that the whole German power metal has is, is got quite incestuous in, in nature in terms of its members, but um, it just means it's got good DNA running all the way through it, good blood. So. Um, Unisonic, fantastic, uh, melodic, power metal, none of your symphonic stuff at all, you know, really, so really good uh, Halloween influence, and, and how could it not be with um, Kiske and Hansen in it. So that's your lot for today. I think that was about eight or nine albums, um, as usual. Um, so I've given you my opinions on these. Let me hear yours. Let me know in the comments if uh, you think I've treated something a little bit harshly or I haven't praised something enough. Always happy to chat about these things in the comments with you. Um, thanks for watching. Got a few other videos coming up in August. Hopefully, going to try and get a bit more time to do some. And um, I'll catch you soon. Cheers.